In today's video, we're going to be talking about global actors in Swift with a special focus on main actors. Before we jump into a playground, start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe to keep the channel growing. Something like 20% of you are only subscribed, so I really appreciate it. Let's open up Xcode, create a new playground, and talk about some actors. So we're going to stick with the blank template, and we're going to be really creative and call this Playground Actors. And let's create it. I shall toss it onto my desktop. Let me just bump up the font size and close all these panels that we don't need. And I'll also expand my window. So I have a previous video on actors. I encourage you to take a look if you haven't done so already. It's more of a primer. But today specifically, we're going to talk about global actors, what they are, how to use them, and how to actually extend them to do some cool stuff. So in a nutshell, global actors are special actors that allow you to perform operations in a certain concurrency context globally, hence the name global actor. So a really good example is the main queue. So traditionally in iOS apps or Apple platform, I should say, whenever we want to dispatch to the main queue, presumably to update our UI, we do something like this. So we do update code in here. So similar, let's go ahead and just save this. So similar to this, we now have access to a main actor. So perhaps we have a class in here. Let's call this final class thing. And every single thing that occurs in here, we want it to occur on the main queue. So the way we go ahead and enforce that is simply by annotating this with the main actor and this main actor is nothing more than a fancy property wrapper under the hood and this now can ensure that anything that the thing class does happens on the main queue so pretty straightforward so far so not too scary how do we create our own global actor so there are cases where you can in fact create your own global actor and it's pretty simple we can go ahead and say at global actor we're going to define our actor, so I'll go ahead and say iOS Academy actor. And perhaps inside of here, we want to have our own concurrency context. We want to execute everything on a certain queue. We can go ahead and do that. What you'll notice here is we get yelled at because we need to bring in the shared property uh, for this actor. So the reason it's yelling at us is because we first need to specify the actor type, which will be this guy. And then we're going to get yelled at one more time to bring in the shared property to satisfy the protocol, just like that. So this shared property will basically just be an instance of this guy, and we can actually get rid of the type alias. So what does this actually mean, right? So we have a shared uh, instance in here, but why, why are we required to bring it in? The reason is global actors serve almost like a singleton. The idea is you only have one global instance of this actor. Very similar to the main queue, we can't have multiple main queues. We can have multiple places dispatching to the main queue, but we can only have one main queue. Hence the name main, otherwise that would be silly. In this case, we created our own global actor and we're basically being told that we need to bring in a shared static member into this actor, which will just be an instance. The idea here is whenever we enforce any concurrency con constraints or context on here, so something like, let's say the global queue or a background queue with a certain quality of service, we only want to have that be uh, one state. We want it to be consistent. So this is how you would create your own global actor. Now let's dive a little bit more into what else you can do with global actors since it's pretty flexible. So up here we showed an example of a thing class. Perhaps we have a, another class. Let's go ahead and call this uh, image presenter. Now this image presenter, perhaps it has a function called fetch, and this fetch function will go ahead and fetch images, pretty self-explanatory, but let's say we have another function on here, and this is called update UI. Now the name should give it away, we want to perform this function always on the main queue. So traditionally you would do something like dispatch queue.main async and throw your code in here, or whoever the caller is, you can check over there and dispatch the actual call directly. But that's kind of a pain and frankly it's a little annoying. So what we can do is actually we can even prefix or annotate functions with a global actor, in this case the main actor. And the reason we're getting yelled at is because I have unnecessary parentheses. 
And what this will allow us to do is, or what it'll, it'll enforce rather for us, is that update UI is only called on the main queue. So pretty cool, we can see that we can apply global actors to functions and methods. We can take it one step further and perhaps we have a collection of images like so. And let me just make sure I go up here and import UI kit. Looks like we already have it. We can also mark this main actor. And if we try to update images from a non UI queue, main queue in this case, we're going to get yelled at. So let's see if I actually do it here if it yells at me. So we're going to go ahead and say named one, two, three. We'll force unwrap that like so. And we expect to be yelled at because it's going to say, hey, you can't actually update images from this context. It's saying that it is an isolated member, which is the technical jargon for it under the global actor scope of main actor, hence it cannot be updated as such. So it's suggesting we can add main actor to make it appropriately work, and that makes sense, right? This function is also guaranteed to occur on the UI uh, thread. So let's actually move this. We can actually jot this down in here, and we'll see that we don't get yelled at. And the reason is because we, once again, have this annotated main actor. So before we wrap up here, this very brief intro to global actors, one cool thing that I came across in an article I was reading that I'll actually link down below is from a Swiftly, an awesome, awesome blog by Antoine. One really cool way you can extend the main actor is by adding a way to dispatch directly to it. So one annoying thing about the main actor, and perhaps this is subjective, is if we just wanted to dispatch some work effectively on a certain queue, perhaps like this, in dispatch queue, it's really easy to do this. But what's the equivalent with an actor? It's not like we can do something like this. And it would kind of be nice if we can, because if we want to move towards a new concurrency model in Swift, we ideally want to be able to do something like this when we do want to shorthand stuff, because typing out dispatch queue main is kind of a major pain. The way that we're going to do this is we are going to create an extension off of main actor. And essentially, we're going to add a run or perform function in here, and we'll basically be able to achieve the same signature like this and essentially the same functionality. So we'll go ahead and say this is a public static func, and we're going to go ahead and call it run. And this function is going to take in two arguments. It'll be a little long, but I'll explain it once we write it out. So first and foremost, we're going to have it take t, which will be a generic. And inside of here, we want two arguments. The first argument is going to be result type, which will be of type t.type with a default value of t.self. So basically, whatever the generic is at that point. The second thing will be the important bit, which is the body, the actual closure to execute. So we talked about up here that we can actually annotate functions and object classes as the global actor or main actor, but we can actually do that for closures as well. So we're going to say that this body here is a main actor. It is also sendable. And we've covered sendable in a recent video, if you're not familiar with it. We're going to say that this closure can throw an error. And let's see, we also want to go ahead and return t as a byproduct of this particular block. Now, we need to make sure that we also annotate this function to be async, to rethrow so we can forward the error. So we're going to say rethrows like so. And we're also going to be returning t as a byproduct of this function. So let's go ahead and fix that. And we should see the errors hopefully go away. Now we actually need to implement this function. And it's really simple to actually implement. In a do catch block, we are going to say return try await body. And in the case that we actually uh, have an error occur, what we're going to do is we're simply going to throw that error to the caller. In other words, we're going to bubble it back up to whoever invoked us. So before we actually look at how to call this monstrosity of a function, let's talk through it. So what we're saying is that the main actor will now have a run function, a run method on it. It takes a result type, which is the result of the actual closure, the body that'll execute. 
it's going to be generic so this allows the body to more or less return anything and we actually don't even need to specify this when we call run because we're saying it'll be t.self whatever the return expression is the body here is something uh, that has to execute uh, in a main actor scope, so on the main queue, it's a closure. It also needs to be sendable, which allows us to pass things between different concurrency domains. It's going to be a simple closure that takes in uh, no parameters, no arguments, and returns t, which is uh, makes a lot of sense because our results type is t. Now this block, this body, can throw an error, hence it's marked throws. And respectively, this run function is async. We marked it rethrows, which we have a recent video on, since we want to bubble up the error and it returns t, just like the results type. The implementation itself, we have a do catch block, since we might be able to uh, or might throw away error. So we have try here. And if an error occurs, we want to bubble it back up. We're returning the results of this, and this is marked as async, the body itself. So we're going to say await the body. So how do we actually call this? How do we get parity with this guy up here? Well, we're going to basically, all we're going to need to do is say main actor dot run, and that's it. And whatever code you toss in here will basically be identical to this. Effectively, we can completely get rid of this from the entirety of our project. So one thing you'll notice is we have a... Uh, error here yelling at us that this is async, which makes sense because we've marked it as such. So in our particular case, if we wanted to use it with the new concurrency model, we'll just toss it in an async block like so. You can include it as a part of a task, and you can also mark this as await like so. So it's uh, basically saying that it's not marked await, which we just did, hence the error disappeared. So that's global actors in a nutshell. They allow you to globally act on a particular queue it's a property wrapper with the most common one that you're going to end up using being main actor. So let me know in the comments down below if you've used actors before, specifically global actors also. Hit that like button if you haven't done so already. It really helps the video out. Hit subscribe if you're into iOS. Share the video and channel with you know folks on Twitter, whoever's learning iOS if you enjoy the content. I really appreciate every single person's comment, like, and subscribe more than I can express. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.